Israeli settlements are Jewish Israeli civilian communities built on lands occupied by Israel since the 1967 Six Day War. Such settlements currently exist in the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and in the Golan Heights. Settlements previously existed in the Sinai Peninsula and Gaza Strip until Israel evacuated the Sinai settlements following the 1979 Israel-Egypt peace agreement and from the Gaza Strip in 2005 under Israel's unilateral disengagement plan. Israel dismantled 18 settlements in the Sinai Peninsula in 1982, and all 21 in the Gaza Strip and four in the West Bank in 2005, but continues to both expand its settlements and settle new areas in the West Bank, despite pressure to desist from the international community. The international community considers the settlements in occupied territory to be illegal, and the United Nations has repeatedly upheld the view that Israel's construction of settlements constitutes a violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention. Israeli neighborhoods in East Jerusalem and communities in the Golan Heights, the latter of which has been annexed by Israel, are also considered settlements by the international community, which does not recognize Israel's annexations of these territories. The International Court of Justice also says these settlements are illegal in a 2004 advisory opinion. In April 2012, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, in response to moves by Israel to legalize Israeli outposts, reiterated that all settlement activity is illegal, and runs contrary to Israel's obligations under the roadmap and repeated quartet calls for the parties to refrain from provocations. Similar criticism was advanced by the EU and the US. Israel disputes the position of the international community and the legal arguments that were used to declare the settlements illegal. The presence and ongoing expansion of existing settlements by Israel and the construction of settlement outposts is frequently criticized as an obstacle to the peace process by the Palestinians and third parties such as the OIC, the United Nations, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, the European Union, and the United States have echoed those criticisms. Settlement has an economic dimension, much of it driven by the significantly lower cost of housing in Jewish settlements compared to the cost of housing and living in Israel. Government spendings per citizen in the Jewish settlements are double those to Israelis in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, while government spending for settlers in isolated areas are three times the Israeli national average. Most of the spendings go to the security of the citizens living there. On 30 June 2014, according to the Yesha Council, 382,031 Jewish settlers lived in the 121 officially recognized settlements in the West Bank. Over 300,000 Israelis lived in settlements in East Jerusalem and over 20,000 lived in settlements in the Golan Heights. In January 2015 the Israeli Interior Ministry gave figures of 389,250 Israelis living in the West Bank and a further 375,000 Israelis living in East Jerusalem. Settlements range in character from farming communities and frontier villages to urban suburbs and neighborhoods. The four largest settlements, Modi'in Elit, Mala Adamum, Beta Elit and Ariel, have achieved city status. Ariel has 18,000 residents, while the rest have around 37,000 to 55,500 each. A number of Palestinians reside in settlements in East Jerusalem. History 1967 War The 1967 Six-Day War left Israel in control of the entire west bank of the Jordan River, including parts of Jerusalem, the entire Sinai Peninsula up to the Suez Canal, and the Gaza Strip. Most of the Golan Heights, since 1981, administered under the Golan Heights Law. Settlement policy As early as 1967, Israeli settlement policy was started by the Labour government of Levi Eshkol. The basis for Israeli settlement in the West Bank became the Allen Plan, named after its inventor Yigal Allen. 
It implied Israeli annexation of major parts of the Israeli-occupied territories, especially East Jerusalem, Goshechen and the Jordan Valley. Yigal Allen became Levi Eshkol's successor as Prime Minister in 1969. The settlement policy of the next government, led by Yitzhak Rabin, was also derived from the Allen Plan. The first settlement was Kfar Rechen, in the southern West Bank, although that location was outside the Allen Plan. Many settlements began as Nahal settlements. They were established as military outposts and later expanded and populated with civilian inhabitants. The Likud government of Menahim Begin, from 1977, was more supportive to settlement in other parts of the West Bank. By organizations like Gush Amunim and the Jewish Agency, World Zionist Organization, and intensified the settlement activities. In a government statement, Likud declared that the entire historic land of Israel is the inalienable heritage of the Jewish people, and that no part of the West Bank should be handed over to foreign rule. Ariel Sharon declared in the same year that there was a plan to settle two million Jews in the West Bank by 2000. The government abrogated the prohibition from purchasing occupied land by Israelis, the Drobler Plan. A plan for large-scale settlement in the West Bank meant to prevent a Palestinian state under the pretext of security became the framework for its policy. The Drobler Plan from the World Zionist Organization, dated October 1978 and named Master Plan for the Development of Settlements in Judea and Samaria, 1979-1983, was written by the Jewish Agency Director and former Knesset member Matit Yahu Drobler. In January 1981, the government adopted a follow-up plan from Drobler dated September 1980 and named the current state of the settlements in Judea and Samaria, with more details about settlement strategy and policy. Since 1967, government-funded settlement projects in the West Bank are implemented by the Settlement Division of the World Zionist Organization. Though formerly a non-governmental organization, it is funded by the Israeli government and leases lands from the civil administration to settle in the West Bank. It is authorized to create settlements in the West Bank on lands licensed to it by the civil administration. Traditionally, the settlement division has been under the responsibility of the Agriculture Ministry. Since the Ulster Accords, it was always housed within the Prime Minister's office. In 2007, it was moved back to the Agriculture Ministry. In 2011, Netanyahu sought to move the settlement division again under the direct control of PMO and to curtail Defense Minister Ehud Barak's authority. According to the Israeli investigative reporter Yuri Blau, settlements are massively funded by private tax-exempt U.S. NGOs, to the tune of $220 million for 2009-2013 to 2013 alone, suggesting that the U.S. is indirectly subsidizing their creation. At the presentation of the Oslo II Accord on 5 October 1995 in the Knesset, PM Yitzhak Rabin expounded the Israeli settlement policy in connection with the permanent solution to the conflict. Israel wanted a Palestinian entity, less than a state, which will be a home to most of the Palestinian residents living in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. It wanted to keep settlements beyond the Green Line including Marla Adamam and Givetz Edev in East Jerusalem. Blocks of settlements should be established in the West Bank. Rabin promised not to return to the 4th of June 1967 lines. In June 1997, the Likud government of Benjamin Netanyahu presented its Allen Plus plan. This plan holds the retention of some 60% of the West Bank, including the Greater Jerusalem area with the settlements Gush Etchen and Mala Adamam. Other large concentrations of settlements in the West Bank, the entire Jordan Valley, a security area, and a network of Israeli-only bypass roads.
In the roadmap for Peace of 2002, which was never implemented, the establishment of a Palestinian state was acknowledged. Outposts would be dismantled. However, many new outposts appeared instead, few were removed. Israel's settlement policy remained unchanged. Settlements in East Jerusalem and remaining West Bank were expanded, while according to official Israeli policy no new settlements were built. At least some hundred unauthorized outposts were established since 2002 with state funding in the 60% of the West Bank that was not under Palestinian administrative control and the population growth of settlers did not diminish. In 2005, all 21 settlements in the Gaza Strip and four in the northern West Bank were forcibly evacuated as part of Israeli disengagement from the Gaza Strip known to some in Israel as the expulsion. However, the disengagement was more than compensated by transfers to the West Bank. After the failure of the roadmap, several new plans emerged to settle all in major parts of the West Bank. In 2011, Haaretz revealed the Civil Administration's Blue Line plan, written in January 2011 which aims to increase Israeli state ownership of West Bank lands and settlement in strategic areas like the Jordan Valley and the Palestinian Northern Dead Sea area. In March 2012, it was revealed that the civil administration over the years covertly allotted 10% of the West Bank for further settlement. Provisional names for future new settlements or settlement expansions were already assigned. The plan includes many Palestinian built-up sites in the areas A and B. Reasons for Settlements Jews who had been living in the West Bank before they were expelled in 1948 wanted to return home. After the Six-Day War, some Israelis believed that Arab forces might attack again. They built settlements on hilltops to act as observation posts for an early warning system. Israelis were afraid that if strategically important lands were returned, Israelis would be in danger. For years, Syria had been firing from the Golan Heights into the kibbutz seam of the valley. If Syria got back the Golan Heights, they would resume firing on the Israelis below. Israelis remembered that after conquering the Sinai, Israel withdrew from the Sinai. If Israel constructed a military base, the soldiers could be ordered to leave. But if they created a settlement on the Syrian Heights, a civilian presence, then no one could just order a withdrawal. There'd have to be a debate in the Knesset. There were Israelis who remembered that Israel had conquered the Sinai in 1956 but gave it back. The promises made by Eisenhower had proved hollow at the first test and had failed to prevent war. They were willing to return land, but only if Israel got a peace treaty in return. They were hoping that building settlements would make it more difficult for Israel to withdraw from land without getting a peace treaty in return. There were religious radicals, convinced that they were fulfilling God's plan for history, for Avraham Kook. The Jews' role was to be the vessel that brings the divine idea into the world. The world's redemption depended on the Jews living in the land of Israel, Rabbi Tzvi Kook said, It's the Lord's land. Is it in our hands to give up even a millimeter? The state of Israel represented the beginning of redemption, and was the state that the prophets foresaw when they were spoke of the end of days. The Bible was the Jewish deed to the land of Israel. The conquest is introducing the end of days, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation. There were secular Israelis who saw the West Bank as the historic patrimony of the Jewish people and control of this region as a matter of momentous historic importance. Settlement building is punishment. According to reports on Israel Radio, the development is a response to the 2014 kidnapping and murder of Israeli teenagers. Settlements is bargaining chips for negotiations, geography and municipal status. Some settlements are self-contained cities with a stable population in the tens of thousands, infrastructure, and all other features of permanence. 
Examples are Beta Elit, Mala Adamum, Modiain Elit, and Ariel. Some are towns with a local council status with populations of 2000 minus 20, such as Alfa, Manisha, Eli, El Khana, Efrat, and Kuryat Arba. There are also clusters of villages governed by a local elected committee and regional councils that are responsible for municipal services. Examples are KFAR Adamum, Neve Daniel, KFAR Tarpuish and Ataret, Kibbutzim and Moshavim in the territories include Dargaman, Gilgal, Niran and Yitiv. Jewish neighborhoods have been built on the outskirts of Arab neighborhoods, for example in Hebron. In Jerusalem, there are urban neighborhoods where her Jews and Arabs live together. The Muslim Quarter, Silwan, Abu Tor, Sheikh Jarrah and Shimon Hatzadik. Under the Oslo Accords, the West Bank was divided into three separate parts designated as Area A, Area B and Area C. Leaving aside the position of East Jerusalem, all of the settlements are in Area C which comprises about 60% of the West Bank. Types of Settlement Cities Towns Aerial, Beta Elit, Modiain Elit and Mala Adamum. Urban suburbs, such as Hargilo. Block settlements, such as Gush Etjen and settlements in the Nablus area. Frontier villages, such as those along the Jordan River. Outposts, small settlements, some authorized and some unauthorized, often on hilltops. The Sassin Report, commissioned by Ariel Sharon's administration, found that several government ministries had cooperated to establish illegal outposts, spending millions of dollars on infrastructure, resettlement of former Jewish communities. Some settlements were established on sites where Jewish communities had existed during the British Mandate of Palestine. Jerusalem, Jewish presence alongside other peoples since biblical times, various surrounding communities and neighborhoods, including Kfar Shiloh, also known as Silwan, settled by Yemenite Jews in 1884, Jewish residents evacuated in 1938, a few Jewish families move into reclaimed homes in 2004, other communities. Shimon Hatzadik, Neve Yakov in Atarot which in post-1967 was rebuilt as an industrial zone. Gush Etjen, four communities, established between 1927 and 1947, destroyed 1948, re-established beginning 1967. Hebron, Jewish presence since biblical times, forced out in the wake of the 1929 Hebron massacre. Some families returned in 1931 but were evacuated by the British. A few buildings resettled in 1967. KFAR Darim, established in 1946, evacuated in 1948, resettled in 1970, evacuated in 2005 as part of the withdrawal from the Gaza Strip, Kalia and Beit Harava, the former was built in 1934 as a kibbutz for potash mining, the latter was built in 1943 as an agricultural community. Both were abandoned in 1948, and subsequently destroyed by Jordanian forces, and resettled after the Six-Day War. Gaza City had a Jewish community for many centuries that was evacuated following riots in 1929. After the Six-Day War, Jewish communities were built elsewhere in the Gaza Strip but not in Gaza City proper. Demographics at the end of 2010, 534,224 Jewish Israeli lived in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. 314,132 of them lived in the in 121 authorized settlements and 102 unauthorized settlement outposts on the West Bank. 198,629 were living in East Jerusalem, and almost 20,000 lived in settlements in the Golan Heights. In 2011, 328,423 Israeli Jews were living on the West Bank, excluding Jerusalem, and the Jewish population in the Golan Heights exceeded 20,000.
For the year 2012, the Jewish population in the West Bank settlements excluding East Jerusalem was expected to rise to 350,000. In May 2014, the Israeli housing minister Uri Ariel, who himself lives in the West Bank settlement of Kfar Adamam, put the settler population at up to 750,000, 400,000 in the West Bank and up to 350,000 in East Jerusalem. He stated, I think that in five years there will be 550,000 or 600,000 Jews in Judea and Samaria, rather than 400,000. Note. Due to change of definition, the number of settlements in the West Bank decreased in 1997 from 138 to 121. Based on various sources, population dispersal can be estimated as follows. 1. Including Sinai 2. Janet Abu Lakad mentions 500 settlers in Gaza in 1978 and 1,000 in 1980 in addition to internal migration. In large though declining numbers, the settlements absorb annually about 1,000 new immigrants from outside Israel. In the 1990s, the annual settler population growth was more than three times the annual population growth in Israel. Population growth has continued in the 2000s. According to the BBC, the settlements in the West Bank have been growing at a rate of 5 to 6 percent since 2001. The establishment of settlements in the Palestinian territories is linked to the displacement of the Palestinian populations as evidenced by a 1979 Security Council Commission which established a link between Israeli settlements and the displacement of the local population. The commission also found that those who remained were under consistent pressure to leave to make room for further settlers who were being encouraged into the area. In conclusion the commission stated that settlement in the Palestinian territories was causing profound and irreversible changes of a geographic and demographic nature.